Hi guys, I just want to give you a quick update regarding the Sidewinder X1 that has a Prusa Pinda probe. As you can see, I have totally removed the LEDs and soldered in some uh, male headers right here so that the uh, wires of the Pinda probe can go straight through the slot. It is a 4 uh, pin slot which is very nice. You do not have to make uh, any more modifications with that. And I shortened the length of the uh, wire as you can see right here okay so let me just pull up a quick print while it's waiting uh, it, I programmed this to probe uh, a 5x5 five five grid so you will be seeing it after it has done uh, heating up okay let me just remove that blob right there perfect And as you can see, it is now probing a 5x5 five five grid. Okay, so I can program it to probe faster, but you will uh, eventually lose the repeatability of the probe. Right now, it is on the sweet spot that it is probing faster compared to the BL Touch. And it does not lose that uh, repeatability. Okay, so it will finish probing the 5x5 five five grid. So again, I had my slicer to uh, wait for the temperatures to go back in before it can actually start the print. Okay, so now that it's uh, printing the prime line, which I still don't see. Okay, there you go. Uh, the good thing about the Pinda probe is that uh, when you are using a capacitive or inductive one that doesn't have a temperature sensor in it, uh, when you're switching from let's say PLA to PETG or PLA to ABS, you'll need to uh, manually adjust the baby steps. If you are using a Pinda probe and you have calibrated it using the G76 command, it has this uh, table that automatically adjusts the baby steps for you so which is very very nice and compared to the other probes that I've been using this has been the most uh, accurate and repeatable probe so yeah props to Prusa for providing us with this beautiful probe